Hello and welcome to College and Career Success. I am super excited to be teaching this class. For many of you, you might be wondering, why am I taking this class? Again, this class is important because we need to address one, where we're at with our skill level, and two, where we're at with ourselves, and are we ready to embark upon this journey, which is going to college and all of the things that it entails. Because again, when you're going to school, it can be a lot. You get punched in the face with knowledge. You have a million things going on in your life. You constantly have to adjust to the reality around you. You might have kids. You might not have been in college in a long time. You might be questioning whether or not you have what it takes. You might be questioning whether or not you even want to do this. You know, and that's good. You should be asking all of these questions because in the end, if you know why you're here, that's going to help you so much. And when it comes to the skill levels, again, if we can just address our strengths and our weaknesses, then we know what we need to work on. Like me, I was a terrible writer, okay? So when I got my master's in sociology, for example, I was so far behind and there are things that I had to do more than once. I had to do things twice because I just couldn't get it right the first time. I didn't have the skills. I was coming out of psychology. I didn't write a lot. And then going into sociology required a ton of writing, and I was just so far behind. But by the time I did it twice, I was really good at it. And I was always grateful because once I became a professor, you know, and I had to go actually teach these subjects, that meant that I really knew my stuff. So that really helped a lot, actually doing things a lot. But I had to address it. I just wasn't up to par in some areas. But again, don't let that get you down. That's completely fine. That's You just need to be like, okay, I suck at you know, this. So how can I get better? Or I'm great at this. Okay, I'm going to maintain that level of awesomeness. You're always going to have that back and forth, you know. These days, you always have people talking about imposter syndrome. And I've taken several certifications on imposter syndrome and things like that. But Y'all have to realize that I've been there, done that. We've all been there. You know what I mean? Like, we're all, like, kids, and then we have to learn about the world. In reality, we're not born with all these skills yet. We have to go out and acquire the crystallized knowledge, right? We all have that fluid knowledge, that capacity to learn, but that crystallized knowledge comes with time and wisdom and practice and experience, wisdom, all of that stuff. I just want to say it over and over and over again. So, again... Especially if this is like your first time going to college or if you haven't been back in a long time, don't freak out. You know, that's kind of this class. It's like saying, hey, like we're all with you. You have tons of support services here to help you. Um, and if, you know, whatever we can do, just let us know. <laughs> it's kind of the uh, a good introduction to this class. But again, this class is about, you know, checking on our skill levels, seeing where we're at, looking on kind of our psychosocial self and asking where we're at, you know, can... I manage the work-life balance. Can I have kids and go to school too? Do I have enough money to survive? All of these things are part of the college experience and we should address that along with inequities like factors and variables associated with socioeconomic status that might be obstacles, for example. You know, my sociological mind obviously will come out in this class a lot. Um, but again, the goal of this class is to just assess our skill levels, evaluate where we're at, figure out where our needs are, make sure we're prepared for college, and then just rock the house, okay? So to open up, uh, chapter one, transitions, balance, and organization. Okay, again, you should be asking yourself, and we should be talking as a group once we all get together, uh, how is a college education going to be valuable to you? What are you doing in college is one of my favorite questions because probably it's economic forces, right? Because you live in a capitalist society that requires you to get a job to sell your label, to make capital, to pay the bills, to eat. Having an education gives you that bump up. For example, someone with a bachelor's makes twice as much as someone with a high school degree. And then someone with a master's or above makes you know anywhere between 30000 and 60000 more than someone with a bachelor's degree on average statistically. But there's also other factors like you just want to learn. Are you here to learn? And then what subject are you interested in learning? So generally, you're in college because one, you need cash. <laughs> you know, it's, let's just be out there. But two, don't you want to do something that you love? Something that you care about? Okay? And so that's the compromise too, right? How do you do something that you care about but also make money doing it, for example? And can you make money doing what you love? And, you know, 
having to find that balance can be very hard. Like I ran hotels and restaurant centers and restaurants and banquet centers my like for my first career. I was a GM for a long time and the casinos and stuff did great financially. And then to be a teacher, it was like I couldn't afford to be a teacher for a long time. Honestly, I had to like take care of my kids and get ahead before I could ever afford to be a teacher. But it didn't like make me give up my dreams of becoming a professor. And so when I finally got to that place where I could live out my dreams, you know what I mean? But again, so you always have those individual level forces, like what do you want versus those social or environmental level forces, like the economy that you live in and the need for money and mortgages and bills and rent, okay? So you should be asking yourself, what ways is a college education beneficial to you? That'll, again, focus your mind on what are you doing here in the first place? And is this what you want? Because if it is what you want, that's awesome. You are set. You know what I mean? And so if you can get to that mindset where you're pumped up about it, you're willing to take on the stress and the extra work and you're ready, you know, these are good questions to be asking. Am I ready? What's it going to take to get ready? Do I need more time? Do I want to take it slow at first? Do I want to jump in and do a bunch of classes? I've mixed it up in my school. Sometimes my life is very busy with kids and work and I'm maybe taking only two classes a semester. Other times I've taken like five, six, you know, as a teacher, the same thing. Sometimes I'll take on a heavier load. Sometimes I have a lot going on. I'll take on a lighter load, just depending, okay? Uh, next, describe two college transitions you have already experienced. Again, like I didn't start school until I was like, 22 you know and i had a child at the time and so i had to find a way to like transition from like you know working and doing all that to finding a way to go to school and i had to constantly change my schedule for example some semesters i'd work in the morning some semesters i had to work at night you know and then for years i, I was a you know restaurant person and then I had to just one day transition to being a professor and it was a huge radical change not only with the way i spend my time but everything with my life it actually opened me up a lot more with the family life because my schedule was a lot better like in my restaurant life i'd never saw my family it was 80 hours a week all the time and at teaching at least i can have time to pick up my kids so there are some really benefits to that you know so how did college education benefit me in the end well, I found some time to actually pick up my kids, which was wonderful, you know? So again, think about what's going on in your life. Transitioning to this balance between your work, your life, and your school. It can be hard, okay? On the right, I have table 1.3 from the book. And looking at these connections between integrity and dimensions of well-being, and then all of these pressures of social, occupational, spiritual, physical, intellectual, emotional... These are all things we should consider, you know, socially in the social environment. How does it benefit you? Get a college education, improves your socioeconomic status. Bam. Occupational, get a job that you love if you get a college degree. Maybe you couldn't get that job without a degree. Spirituality, you know, are you seeking out whatever it is in your life that you're seeking out that fills your heart? Okay, physically, you know. Are you getting enough exercise? Are you eating good during your school years? You know, I had to make a change when I turned 40, cut out the saturated fats, start exercising a lot more. I had to change. I got old, you know, intellectually. Are you constantly stimulating? Are you seeking that out? And emotionally, where are you at? You know, and so again, if you get in touch with all these fears, you know, just kind of tap into all these forces that are guiding you toward getting a college degree. Provide two examples of how knowledge of your life dimensions will help you be successful in school and balanced in your life. Think about yourself. What's it going to take to knock this out? Think about your schedule. Think about your daily life. What's it going to be like? Are you ready for this? Okay. Identify two organizational strategies you can use immediately that will help you achieve academic success. We are here as resources. The college has so many things. But again, if you need things like daycare, fixes for your car, money in the bank to take care of groceries. Again, please contact your advisors, anybody that we can put you in touch with to help you. College can be very stressful and require a lot of support. And so it's you need that support. So please come and just let us know what we can do to help you get through college. In chapter one and two, we're going to focus a lot on concepts like critical thinking, Defined as gathering information, uh, weighing it for accuracy and appropriateness, and then making a rational decision based on facts you gathered. That's the book's definition. Again, critical thinking is just 
being able to one on when it comes to your schoolwork are you able to look at the material the sources you're using you know analyze things put it into your long-term memory and then apply it but it also is other areas like your work-life balance and managing your time a lot of the stuff that we're going to focus on in this class and then integrity is very important again when it comes to your job and school you know you know i have taken so many ethics classes i could probably verse the apa code of ethics <laughs> if i needed to i refer to that all the time i'm not gonna lie but again, same thing with plagiarism. Make sure you're using citations, references, all of these things. I'll put up some examples for you guys in the class with some templates about how to write papers. I'll put up a video on how to write papers. I'll put up examples of what references should look like. And then you just follow whether it's APA, MLA, Chicago style. Each field has its own thing. So just use the one that's appropriate for nursing, um, unless your class has some other um, version of that. But we'll get into these concepts a little bit later. There are some quiz questions on critical thinking and integrity, so I put up some tables, so make sure you pay good attention to those in the book. Uh, we're also going to be looking at priority management again throughout this class. How do you take notes, do well on quizzes and tests, take care of your kids, go to work, knock out all these things. How do you organize that all and still stay, stay sane? <laughs> still say, stay sane. Say that three times, alliteration. Still say, stay sane. Still, I can't do it. I don't know how I could still stay sane. <laughs> still say, stay sane. It's hard. I've had times. I mean, I'm not going to lie. Plus, you get pressures, and then sometimes you fail. Like, what happens when you fail an exam or a class, and you have to retake it, and you're crushed, you know? It's like, how do you cope? So, again, leading into personal well-being, that's another big factor. What's it going to take for you to get through this? You know, are you going to reward yourself? Are you going to go out to dinner after each class? Are you going to have a party? Are you just going to sleep, you know, and just be like, okay, you're going to go to Florida, you know, how are you going to take care of yourself? Do you need help, support, time off, away from the kids, a place to go study, whatever it might be? Think about these things, speak them into your life, set an action plan, create an outline, and then just make it all happen. And then, you know, before you know it, you forget you were ever in school. That is totally how it goes, too. Like, I can't tell you how many years I spent in school getting a PhD. And then I'm, I, do I even remember a class? I do remember of several, but it does become a blur. It's like my kids. I don't even remember changing diapers. It's been so long. Some interesting stuff on how to become a successful student. Um, okay. Again, think about the physical and mental purposeful motivation efforts and organization you have to put into this process. Okay. It's body, mind, and spirit. Let's jump into this. How do we stay organized? How do we keep it together? How do we maintain our sanity? How do we keep our bodies in shape so that we don't gain 40 pounds eating junk food while cramming coffees at Starbucks, you know? Been there, done that. I had to take up running and rock climbing, and I lost, like, you know, a good 30 pounds right away. <laughs> uh, benefits of a college education. Again, be thinking about why you're here. That's very important. Set goals, short and long term. Sometimes I don't think about the end game. I just think about the tasks in front of me. What's in front of me for the week, right? And I'll set all my alarms and I'll write out all my tasks. Sometimes I'm looking across the month. Okay, in the future, I've got a big paper coming up. I should probably start that two weeks in advance, that kind of stuff. Um, and then you can look at the long-term goal of graduating as a finally end goal just to motivate you to get there, you know? Um, just some side notes on these concepts like power and red that might come across in this book. Make sure you prepare for your classes, get ready, do your studying, um, make sure you've read the chapters, you've been doing it daily, not just in one time, but doing it daily. Stay organized, work really hard, evaluate your work to make sure it's good, make it better when it's not. Rethink what you're doing and, you know, check in on yourself constantly to make sure you're doing cool. Um, but again, try to think critically when you're in school, communicate as well as you can, make sure you talk to the professors, ask questions, um, try to apply the knowledge because that is how you use that long-term memories and it becomes more stored and made easily attainable. Seek out the skills, look over everybody's shoulder, ask questions. If you don't know how to write a paper, if you don't know how this works, go ask and write it down. Every time someone teaches me anything, I write it down and then I go home and I type it up. That's how I became an awesome chef. I looked over every chef's shoulder, I wrote down the recipes and then I typed them all up and now I don't have to ask them twice how to make it. You know what I mean? 
uh, be an agile learner, being flexible and, you know, just being swift whenever possible because you just got to knock stuff out in college. There are those times, right? Um, get good learning lifelong habits where you get in this kind of a steady pace of whatever days it is you generally do your school. Knock out your school during those days. That's your time. Um, contribute to the world. Have a growth mindset versus a fixed mindset. Don't just be totally stuck in your ways. Be thinking positively. Take responsibility for your actions and your schoolwork. Again, remember everyone has imposter sy syndrome. And just make sure you reward yourself constantly. Okay, I cannot stress that enough. Okay? <laughs> just, just, it's good for you. Just, you know, you're doing good. You knock out a semester. You get those grades in at the end of that semester. You're one step closer to getting where you want to be. That is a huge thing. Um, I threw in a little social psychology because, again, it's interesting to think about things like our self-concept. Explain how the self-concept and self-esteem affect academic importance. Guys, believing in yourself, I mean, it might be something that you hear, like, spoken to kids, but it goes so far. If you are confident in who you are, and even then, in your, in your, and your ability to do this, and even when you make mistakes, you'll overcome it, Right? So I put the cycle of failure and the cycle of success up here. Again, if you have that low self-esteem that leads to low performances on tests, it increases anxiety and effort, which leads to more failure. However, if you have high self-esteem that leads to high performance expectations, you believe you can take this test, you've prepared for it, you've studied for it, you work harder at it, it reduces your stress, you end up doing very well. Okay? So it's good. I put up this little thing. Like, on the whole, I'm satisfied with myself. I think I'm no good at all. I feel I have good qualities. I'm not as good as other people, etc. Where are you at in your mindset? And I basically just say, you know what? Just believe in yourself. You got this. You are a human born with the capacities just like everybody else. And if you're lacking in some area, like I was saying, don't stress it. And when you fail... Learn from it and jump back on and then get back into it and do it again. You know, it's like if you trip every time you walk, you know, eventually you learn to walk like all little kids do when they're figuring out how to walk. OK, and then there's some bigger, you know, ideas like the self-fulfilling process prophecy. If you speak this into your life, can you make it happen? There's a lot of power in positive psychology. What roles do you play and how do you balance them? Are you a parent? Are you a worker? Are you a student? Are you taking care of your parents? You know, how are you going to balance all of those roles? Are you going to have role strain as a result? What are your strengths and weaknesses? Just come out with it. Don't be scared. Like, you know, and I know my weaknesses. I know what I'm terrible at. Like, I really want to go into physics, but I'm just not smart enough. I've seen the people that do physics and like, I did when I took AP chemistry, I knew that day because those kids were so much like seen better than I was. They just could, I don't know, maybe they were better at it naturally. I just knew it. So maybe that's how I ended up in psychology and sociology because my philosophical mind is just as good as their chemical mind, you know, or whatever it might be. But I just, you know. I didn't want to be insecure about it though. I'm just gonna come out with it and then build on my strengths and I did get through AP chemistry though. I did take more chemistry after that. I had to work at it, but I did have to work a lot harder than they did. It was one of my weaknesses, but I, you know, you overcome it. The heck with it. I'm not gonna let it get me down and break me because I'm not as smart as they are at AP chemistry, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Is your self-concept yours? Again, we are all socialized by other people and people impose their not only will you know, but they have molded our ideologies and attitudes toward life, what we believe in, what we think we should do with our lives. Ask yourself, what do you want to do with your life? You know, and then pull yourself outside of all the pressures and ask yourself again, who am I? What do I want? Is this what I want? Am I doing what I want to be doing? That's a powerful thought. Are you a returning student or a military service or an older, wiser learner? Like, again, with me, I started school later. I mean, I was in OWL's Older, Wiser Learners Club. We had our own little room where it was me and some older, wiser learners, and it was great. I didn't let it break my self-esteem either. I mean, is it insecure when you're a little older, when you got around younger people in school? Yeah, of course, I have those feelings. But what am I going to do? You know, <laughs> that's the reality of it. It's not even a weakness. It just means I have more wisdom and crystallized knowledge than they do. <laughs> But again, 
these things do actually affect us. Like we really do care. And the way we feel about ourselves, our self-concept really play a huge role in whether it's successful in college and beyond. Okay, so I am just kind of sarcastically approaching this for a little bit of fun, just to kind of put this into your mind that we should be thinking about these things and that these basic concepts of believing in yourself can go a really long way to you being successful, not only in school, but also when you go to apply for jobs. Like when you go to apply for jobs, are you confident? Do you have the vocabulary? Do you know the words to say to get that job? You know what I mean? How to become a great nurse requires how much vocabulary. It's insane how much vocabulary you have to memorize just to be able to get along in the culture of nursing and the hot in the in the healthcare professional field. It is very complex. My wife is a banker. She speaks complete gibberish. I don't know what she's ever saying because I don't know her lingo. Okay? So again, believe in yourself, go learn the skills. If you don't have the skills, work hard at learning those skills and you will be fine. And then believe that you are just as good as anybody else, you know? And again, are you ready for college success? What's your rationale toward college? How do you feel about it? Are you excited to be here or are you really stressed and unhappy and not ready? Let's get to the bottom of it and figure out where we're at. How are you with using your time? Are you good at time management and getting your stuff done or do you procrastinate? Do you have a sense of understanding of yourself and what you actually want out of life? Are you good at note taking and outlining, test taking, reading, writing and speaking? Again, I was terrible at writing and speaking. Memory. Oh, I love teaching psychology memory. It's so cool. But how good are you at taking those short term memories and storing them in your long term memory? Again, memory requires really if you just do it every day instead of it once, for example, you'll be better at it. But how often do you study every day? Again, these are some things that you could change. The choices in your life, the decisions, your work-life balance, how's that affecting you? Your technological know-how, are you really quick at knocking out PowerPoints or are you slow? How are you with using the nursing software? How good are you with using the libraries? Decision-making, you know, what about decision-making? Again, leading back into your choices. How are you prioritizing your work? How are you prioritizing your homework? What comes first? When can you get it done? Uh, relationships. How's it going in your personal life? I don't want to know that personally, but again, you got to be thinking about does that kind of stress affect your college? Because you know what happens when you get in an argument or something with the person you're with and all of a sudden you're broken and shattered, just like every other romance book out there. What about money and finances? Because that's going to weigh you down so much. I mean, it does. I've been in college. I know what it's like to scrounge up pennies from a double, st for a double stack. You know what I mean? Like that's totally the college experience. And we I bet money is a huge factor in whether or not people, it is, I don't have to bet, it is a huge factor. I teach at community colleges and universities and I can see the difference between having financial support and not having financial support, for example. And then overall health, how is that affecting you? I put up just a ton of resources here just to give you some ideas about stuff. Um, again, at your school, please use your resources. Talk to the advising centers. Go to student services. Get in touch with career centers. Um, any problems, you know, talk to the police, things like that, because that stuff happens. You know, there's domestic things, whatever. That kind of stuff might happen, too, and you don't want to let, you know, it's hard, that stuff can get in the way of your college experience. So you need to realize there's all kinds of resources. The library, um, people looking over your papers ahead of time, whatever it might be. Um, Please use the resources of the school. All right. Chapter two really starts to delve into the concept of critical thinking. And again, critical thinking is ridiculously broad, but the book's definition, again, gathering information, weighing it for accuracy and appropriateness, and then making a rational decision based on facts you gathered. Again, it's so broad because we could be talking about one assignment, like when you're going to do a research paper. Are you using scholarly resources or are you just using random websites? This is college. You know, we need to be using the scholarly resources that are supported and peer reviewed, fact checked, etc. So again, we need to be able to look at factual data versus, you know, unfactual or unfounded or unproven or whatever you might word you might want to use there. Um, critical thinking in general is problem solving, um, 
creative thinking, you know, whatever word you want to use for critical thinking. I'm um, higher power thinking, higher level thinking, I'm um, executive function, you know, evolving, or, you know, whatever it might be, being smart about your approach to life, having street smarts, um, being able to read a card game. Again, it's ridiculously broad. But again, when it comes to critical thinking for this class, the idea is we need to be thinking critically about the work that we're doing, the information that we're taking it in. We need to be deciding what's the important information, what do we need to be storing, how do we pass these classes, how do we pass these exams, where do I get the information to pass these exams, whatever it might be that you're coming across. Your book talks about the RED model, the RED model, to establish a clear and precise plan to minimize any academic problems that you have, which is stop and think, recognize assumptions, evaluate information, come to draw conclusions, and determine some action plan, okay? But again, this can be applied to anything, whether it's an assignment or whether it's your life or whether it's your time management skills, like let's apply it to TAM time management. Stop and think. I'm not doing a great job managing my time. Okay, so what can I do about it? You know, okay, I can maybe set a schedule and then set some alarms and that might take some, you know, help me with this, okay? And so, again, just define the problem, think about the outcomes you're trying to achieve, come up with an action plan and knock it out, okay? Um, explain how critical thinking skills can help maintain balance and wellness in your life. Again, think about your work life school balance what's it going to take and again this is what i've been talking about this whole time this is this critical thinking it's looking at all these little pieces and then trying to put them all together for one big puzzle which is your giant life right how do you learn the skills pass the test read all the information you need to do find time to come to school while also finding time to take care of the kids get their lunches together have some relationships with maybe a significant other or friends, try to find time to catch a season of lost here and there, whatever it might be. Okay, so you guys are all there though. We're in college. I mean, that's just, you know, part of it, right? Do we have the critical thinking skills necessary to do this? Of course you do. All of you have it. You know, you just have to believe that you have it. Your book and some of the quiz questions get into these ideas like lower order thinking skills and higher order thinking skills. It's an interesting way to break it up, but again, lower order thinking skills are defined as basic building blocks in the learning process. Again, if you're not good at math, you're going to have a hard time with the complex math, the higher order thinking. So again, get down to the basics, right? If you want to learn guitar, you learn the chords first. Then after you learn the chords, then you start you know, to learn some of the notes within those chords, which can then start to become lead. Then once you start to learn the notes and all the different notes on the guitar, you can learn to bend it and start to slide. Then you start learning chords in different places on the guitar. Then you start learning all the patterns on different places in the guitar. Okay, and so again, those are the building blocks to what it takes to become a really good guitar player. Same thing with school, right? You guys need to be good at math and science and you're going to be taking psychology classes and sociology classes, which will be talking about race, ethnicity, Psychology, you could be talking about biological factors in the brain associated with mental disorders, for example. I mean, you guys are going to be all over the place learning information. You might not know stuff about all of this. So it's good just to get down to the basics. That's why I like the intro classes. You know, they teach you everything you need to know. They cover all the general concepts. I would say as a professor, it's great just to go back to the intro books and just reread them. Because again, it just reminds you of all of that ways of thinking of that paradigm that you are studying, for example. But again, higher order thinking, that's where you guys are going to be, you know, and get to the end of this nursing school. Right now you're learning the basics, right? All these little things like how to prick someone in the arm. But before you know it, you're going to be doing that on the fly in the ER in some critical situation. <laughs> okay, so... You know, but again, it takes those baby steps, like writing a dissertation, for example. Like, I sucked at writing, but before I knew it, I was writing a dissertation to get a PhD. You know what I mean? And so, which is kind of remarkable, because I failed when I first went to grad school. Like, I sucked at it, you know? But to get out of it, I had to become good at it. So I had to learn the basic building blocks. I guess I learned enough to get through it. I'm not going to say I'm a great writer or anything, but I can knock out stuff a lot better. I have a factory assembly line approach. That's kind of what it is, though, for you guys. 
you need that assembly line approach, but not one that's detached, one that's passionate, all right? So it's like you're an efficient working system that's full of passion and love. So if you can find a way to have all of these things and knock out school, you will get through this, okay? But again, it is those basic board building blocks, the lower order thinking skills. I've, again, in psychology, I've never heard it discussed in such a way. It's just this is what the book says. So I wanted to put it in there. Uh, but then compared to higher order, and then you do have some quiz questions on it. So it's good that we're going over in the end. So I put up some critical thinking tables. Again, the critical thinking process from your book, reflecting on ideas, brainstorming, making your decisions, implementing your plan, and then reevaluating it afterwards. Um, standards of critical thinking, clarity, accuracy, relevance, and logic. Um, you might see these come up. So again, refer to these tables in your book when you guys come up on some quiz questions. And then the language of bloom, remembering, understanding, applying, analyzing, evaluating, and creating. And again, if you just look at all these words, this is kind of what the book is saying, critical thinking it is. Is the information clear? Is it accurate? Is it relevant to what I'm studying? And does it make sense? Do you have the ability to remember information, understand what you memorized, and then be able to turn around and use that information to you know, achieve some successful outcome, for example? You know, and then the information you're taking in, are you reflecting on it, brainstorming, you know, choosing, you know, whatever. I don't know how you guys want to approach it, but it's just a bunch of cool ideas here. So I put up a bunch of tables just in case to fly through them. Okay, for chapter three, we're definitely focusing more on the priority management skills. Okay, what are your time management skills? How efficiently are you at knocking out stuff and doing it well? Not just efficiently, but with quality. Again, those are two big words, being efficient and then having high quality work. Um, if you guys struggle with this, again, I have to use my calendar. I'm constantly putting stuff in my calendar because I have so many meetings and random stuff going all the time, and it's inconsistent that I have to have it in my calendar. I get lost. Then I go through my calendar each week, and I set alarms on my phone for each one of my things that I have to be at, and then I put that in my phone. Otherwise, I'm just going to miss everything, and I'd screw everything up. So again, make sure you guys develop some kind of a written schedule. I write out my schedule every semester for what I'm teaching on my refrigerator. And I just put it right in the middle of my refrigerator so that I'm staring at it every day. And by staring at it every day over and over and over again, I'm preparing myself for what's coming. I'm getting in my head the schedule. I know what to expect. I know what's up and coming. And then for my classes, of course, for me, I go through my classes a week ahead of time and post announcements so I know what's coming for the classes to come, for example. But make sure you guys think about that. Uh, use and evaluate at least one priority management tool. Guys, make sure you're using a calendar, a planner, your phone, to something. Come up with a weekly to-do list that ranks your tasks in order of importance, not just with school, but again, with your work and your life too. Identify at least three types of procrastination um, and a strategy to deal with each. Like, I, I, are you one to just wait till the weekends? Okay, I just really struggle. Are you one to wait till the last minute? You know, who are you as a person? For me personally, with my kids and wife and life and jobs, I never was able to even start working on homework until like 10 o'clock on a Friday. And I would literally work from 10 o'clock on Friday till 4 o'clock in the morning on Saturday. Then I'd sleep till like 12. Then do all the family and school and work stuff. Then I'd come home and then about 10 o'clock on saturday night i'd start writing again and i worked like four o'clock in the morning sleep till 12 on sunday and then sunday i would look over all my work that i did and then submit it that was one way i got through parts of grad school you know in my bachelor's i remember working i just go to school on tuesdays and thursdays all day from nine o'clock in the morning till nine o'clock at night then i wouldn't think about school for the other five days while i raised my son when he was young and was working like two or three jobs the other days. And so every semester is a little bit different for me. But again, that's what I'm saying. So just adjust it. But then think about your personality. Who are you as a person? When can you actually get stuff done? That's your time. And if you need a place to get it done, find a place to get it done. Mine was always the basement or hiding out wherever I could just hide out. Basement, garage, out back. Uh, I actually get a lot of work done when I take my kids to the park. Um, or I take my kids to the library. I let them just go run around and I just knock out school and I get so much done. I get like all my grading and stuff done. Like, well, I'm just taking my kids to the park. It's awesome. They're old enough. I don't have to watch them every five seconds, which is great. You know, they're the youngest one's seven. So we're at that point. But yeah. 
And then uh, describe how organization skills can help you balance your life's demands. Again, what are your organizational skills? Do you have them? Are you all over the place? Is your laundry piled up? Is your car full of McDonald's wrappers? <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. You know, what's your backpack look like? Do you have papers everywhere? How do you have it organized? Again, for me, um, I'm sharing my screen. Oh, I don't have this computer locked up. Uh, for me, I use my OneDrive. And my OneDrive has a folder for every one of my classes. And when I go to start anything, I immediately save it to my OneDrive folder. And that's how I work for everything. I don't save anything to my computer. I have it all organized nicely by folder per class in my OneDrive. And it's fantastic for me. So again, make the most of your time. I put this little chart up here. I often wake up later because procrastination will come up in your quiz. Um, so again, those three procrastination strategies. But I often wake up later than I should. I'm, you know, guilty. I usually late for classes and appointments. I'm not. I can't. I'm a professor. It's not against the rules. I'm always in a rush getting places. I'm actually always about 15 minutes early. But again, think about yourself. Who are you? Do you put off big tasks and assignments to the last, last minute? Are you always late when you go to meet your friends? You know what I mean? Like, um... When I look at the clock, I realize I lost track of time. I often forget about appointments and reschedule them. Who are you as a person? And so again, that power idea, prepare. Learn where your time is going. Organize. Use a calendar or a timetable or a to-do list. Work. Follow the schedules you put together. Evaluate. Keep track of short-term and long-term accomplishments. And then rethink what you're doing to make sure it's working. So again, discuss strategies to manage your time effectively. Do you have a time log? What's eating up all your time? Explain ways to balance competing priorities. What works for you? When is the best time for you to get stuff done? How much time is, should be spent on school? Is it 160 hours a semester or 160 hours a week? <laughs> Which would be the whole week, you know what I mean? Uh, the to-do list. Do you have a to-do list? Create a calendar. Do you have one? Identify ways to deal with surprises and distractions. How do you cope with all this work-life balance? Are you stressed? What's going on? How can we help reduce stress? Does running help? Does getting away from the kids? Whatever it may be, do it. How do you do your stuff? Do you do it all at once? Or is it 10 minutes here, 10 minutes here, or just like an hour a day? Um, how do you cope with procrastination? What do you do when you're just not feeling it? That's going to happen in school. No matter how gung-ho you are, there's going to be days where you're like, I don't want to cook dinner. I'm just not in the mood to have to get up in the morning with the kids. I don't have time to do this homework right now. I'm tired. I just want to sleep and watch Lost for days. How do you cope with that moment? I have to dig down deep. And I've had times where I've had to dig down really deep. But, you know, if you have that those goals in mind, it'll help you focus and cope with those moments where you're just not feeling it. And I'm not saying, like, to fake it till you make it. That's not it at all. It's more like just dig down deep and you'll find you have a lot more energy in you than you than you knew. But again, balancing that work, education, and life is really a big key. Um, please always ask what works for you. What's your style of getting things done? How do you get it done? Do you need to escape to the library or work while the kids are playing? Or, you know, are you having to take care of your parents and how are you managing that? I'm sure you just have a lot going on in your life. Which is, you know, how that's the college experience. You know, we're at that age in our life where we have all these responsibilities and we're trying to go to school and, you know, how it goes. Again, I put a little bit here on learning styles. I'm not going to bore you too much with this, but, you know, gather up the information in any way that you possibly can. Teachers are pretty good about using various ways to appeal to all the reading, the, the learning styles, but. You know, some are better at reading, visual, auditory, uh, learning by doing. Some people have multiple intelligences, you know what I mean? So some people are more left brain, verbal. Some people are more right brain, nonverbal. And I, hopefully the assignments cater to you in such a way that you can get the information you need. If you're ever struggling with this, though, and you need to, like, record a class or... Um, you know, type out everything they're saying as they're talking or whatever it might be, just do that. Help yourself and find a ways to get access in, in ways that, you know, are good for you. Um, I put up uh, uh, learning theories just for fun or not in the psychology class. You just probably have to take that class. But 
how do we learn? Okay, operant conditioning, rewards. Again, rewards benefit us. If we're working toward these rewards, then that's we will take the time to learn. Uh, cognitive theory, observing how other people do it. Look around you. Who's doing a good job? Look at what they're doing. Ask them how they're doing it and just do try it their way. I love templates. I get templates from everybody just to see how they're doing stuff. And then classical conditioning, stimulus response. Practice, practice, practice. The more you do it, the better at it you'll be. Okay? Chapter 4, Information Literacy. The book goes pretty deep into looking at where do you get your information from social media, websites, magazines, etc. Again, in college, you really want to focus on the scholarly articles as much as you can. If you just go to your library and your school at that search box, there's usually a small box below it or to the left that says peer-reviewed or scholarly articles. Just check that box and then pull the citations out. Whenever you're quoting, make sure you use quotes. And then, you know, at the end of the quote, you have a parentheses, last name, comma, year, comma, page, or P, period, 196, parentheses, period. I'll put up how to do the citations as templates in this class so you don't have to like memorize as I'm talking or whatever, but learn to do references properly. That's going to be very important. Um, so yeah, you need to be able to consume information and figure out which information is based upon facts or assumptions. Facts again, in, you know, whatever is a fact is all relative, but again, facts are generally supported through the peer-reviewed scientific process. So that's what you're looking for. Websites, they don't have any evaluative processes broken in. You can just say whatever you want on a website. So you need to get very specific about the websites you're using. If you use them, like .gov sites tend to be pretty heavily supported, but even then it could just be some bureaucrat in an office putting stuff on a website. You know what I mean? So you need that's going to come up on your quiz questions. Um, you need to explain the four steps uh, an information a literate person follows when doing research. Um, explain the practice one strategy for responsible behavior for each of the following. How to email your instructor, receiving and sending text messages, participating on social network sites. Guys, it's important for you guys to learn to write proper emails, grammatically correct papers, using formal sentences and this can be a challenge especially if like english isn't your second language and we're in the united states for for example and so again that's what i mean with the skill levels some of this stuff can be a more of a struggle for other people but again it's good to address that this is something i might need to work at and so we can take the stuff that we're writing to other people and be like hey will you look this over bring it to your teachers ask questions about how to properly do this your book has all these graphs, so look those over about like emails to do's and don'ts, following punctuation, being civil, um, you know, having a, you know, use your .edu, Felbury, you know, whatever it is, like .edu uh, website for this, you know, when you send it, not like your Gmail that's completely random. Um, use clear language, like to whom may concern, or dear so-and-so, comma, sincerely, yada, 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 okay? Um you guys need to know about plagiarism. Again, so I put the little chart that's in your book. But again, that's what I was talking about. Make sure you're citing your stuff. Make sure you're quoting properly. The higher up you go, you generally don't use quotes. You tend to paraphrase everything that you're saying. Just make sure you cite everything and then look at my template or just look at Purdue APA or any of the other citation uh, resources that are out there to really teach you how to do references but i will have those templates uh, put up in the modules for you guys so don't stress that um yeah you know so that's pretty much what this chapter is really focusing on um we'll get a little bit later into grammatical structure of essays and how to use headings and subheadings and i'll put up a bunch of information on stuff like that and then with the specific things that are catering toward nursing you know you Definitely ask questions about the formal, organized methods for approaching those types of papers, projects, assignments, how to cite it, what's the structure of it, how should it be organized. You need to know that kind of stuff. But again, the four steps of information literacy. What do I need? Okay. Where will I find what I need? How do I know if the information is good? And how do I use the information that I've found? So again, when you're looking to see what you need, 
I like to use the peer-reviewed viewed sources so that I know it's a good source. And then I just, when I'm reading stuff, I'll read the abstract, the introduction, the conclusion, and the discussion. And then I'll just, you know, sift through the methods and parts of the results that I can make sense of. With my, you know what I mean? When it comes to your class, though, since we are in information literacy, uh, I put up an example of like how to do an outline. You know, think about taking good notes, stay organized, make sure you save those notes or organize them in such a way that you can find them again using a laptop or a tablet by hand. Um, the, there's some suggestions like don't just copy what's on the board, but here process it, even put it in your own words, but that's for you. Some people just like to write it straight out. You can use abbreviated phrases or just write it straight out. Use outlines like the way that's on the left, the way it's broken up into headings and subheadings, because that's basically what that is, headings and subheadings. Um, talk to text even if you want to record your professor, if that works for you. I just Sometimes I just like to like, like with, I'll record things and then just listen to what they say later. Um, apply techniques for taking notes. Um, think about having too many or too few of notes. Evaluate your notes. Are they useful for you? Are they helping you with the tests? Review your notes frequently. And then developing a concept map is also just like doing this outline. You kind of have the, the bubbles for your headings and they branch out into the subheadings. That can help with people if you don't like the outline. And then uh, take notes as you study. Use flashcards, whatever helps you in the end. Um, same thing with taking tests. Depending upon the type of test or assignment or exam or whatever you're taking, it might require studying a little bit different or preparing a little bit different. Some things require just memorizing a lot of stuff. Some things require doing a lot of research. So think about the type of test that you're preparing for. Is it essay, short answer, multiple choice? Overcome any test anxiety by recognizing it, realizing we're all going through it. Take deep breaths. Um, count five, then ten, then five. Whatever helps you to get through it. Go for a quick run. Have some food. Eat a peppermint. Have goals set for when taking tests. Make sure you're prepared. You studied multiple times. The most important thing with tests and memory and things like that is getting enough sleep and then studying over time. Hence, preparation is great. Make sure you arrive early, get some food in you, have slept well, be relaxed, visualize success. During the test, read thoroughly. You can break it into parts if you need to. I think a lot with nursing school, though, you're not allowed to. Is you have to go from question one on. But check your math. You know, Make sure you verify all that. Studying groups are great. Cramming, guys, avoid cramming. You want to study a lot of, it's over time, even if it's a little bit over time. Doing too much at once, your mind can't put all that information into short-term memory or in the long-term memory. You're going to lose it. So you want to study over time. Make sure you sleep because look at babies. When they're sleeping, that's why they sleep so much. It's just storing all that information. But again, what works for you when it comes to going to college, work-life balance, taking tests, how do you approach an essay? What works best for you and your schedule? And then all of us are here to guide you and help you if you don't know how to do it. You, the best thing you can do in college is talk to your professors, communicate, talk to your peers, communicate, okay? All right, cool. Chapter five, motivation and achieving your goals. Again, I've talked a lot about this already, but who are you as a person? What do you want? Do you have it in you to achieve this? You know, and even if you don't in those times, just dig deep and pull out, you know, what you need. So again, I got the chart, right? What do you want to accomplish? Why do you want to accomplish this goal? Why do you want to be here? How will you accomplish this goal? How will you get through school? And how will you know when you accomplish this goal? When you get your degree, when you're out there in the field working, you know, whatever it might be. Uh, properties of your goals have specific measurable goals. Set short and long-term goals like we talked about initially that are attainable and realistic and that you can achieve in some kind of a timely manner. But sometimes a timely manner is like four to ten years. Like a PhD is like ten years of college. It takes forever, you know. So intrinsic and ex int extrinsic motivation is going to come up in the quizzes. Again, intrinsic motivation is like that inner motivation. What from inside of you is driving you? Your passion, your dreams, your just whatever, your love or your fact that you're hungry and you need food so you need a job. And then you have extrinsic factors like are your parents influencing you to go to school? Are you trying to get some status in your life because all your other friends are successful and you want to be able to look them in the eye? 
Or is it economic pressures? Like you need to go to school to make money because it's expensive and you know, things like that. So your book's going to break it down into intrinsic internal motivations versus extrinsic or social motivations. Okay. That's why I said earlier when we're talking about who are you as a person, we've all been molded by other people. A lot of us have spoken this into our life. Is this what you want or is this what your parents want, you know, or what society wants? What do you want? Do you want to be here? And if you can answer that question for yourself, it's going to help you a lot. So list and describe major motivating forces in your life. I love teaching. It's inspirational. This way of life, the academic, intellectual, philosophical way of life is fantastic. I love it. Of course, I was motivated to work here, but God, it was a lot of work. And it just like, at times it seemed like it was never going to end and I'd be in school forever and I was in school forever. <laughs> Identify a motivational barrier and create at least one strategy to overcome it. I sucked at writing. I had to overcome it. I failed. I had to take classes twice. I mean, you know, but I got better. What's your attitude toward it? Are you happy? Are you smiling? Are you committed? Are you scared to fail? Do you have a sense of control? over your situation, over school and work and life? Do you have clear cut, short and long term goals? So again, create a goal statement that includes what you wanna do, how you will do it, why you will do it, and when you will accomplish it, and that will help you. And then we put up Maslow's hierarchy of needs because again, in order to get to that self-actualized place in life, Nirvana, where you feel like, I have it all, I'm so happy, yay. Again, we need to take care of the food, the shelter, and the water. So again, with college students, socioeconomic status, you know, depending upon where you're coming, this can be very hard. Safety and concern. You know, are you safe? Do you have the food? Do you have some support? Not only from your family, getting that love and belongingness, but you also have support from the school. Please take advantage of it. Do you believe in yourself? Do you have self-efficacy and self-esteem, self-confidence in yourself, all right, you know? And then again, can you get to where you're going? You can, but again, a lot of it takes doing it, having the means to do it, and believing you can do it. It takes a lot, <laughs> okay? But again, I truly hope that you guys will all achieve all of your dreams because that's the overall goal, right? Uh, so again, quiz things just to be thinking about for quizzes. Learn about critical thinking, study that. Learn about the part about integrity in chapter one and how we're gonna approach school honestly. We're not gonna plagiarize also. Looking at good data versus bad data, like looking at scholarly resources versus just random websites when it comes to the information. Are these fact, peer reviewed, supported facts, or are they just people's assumptions and thoughts put on paper? Higher order versus lower order. Again, higher order is like, the big picture in order to be a great nurse you have to learn all the other little things first but once you get all those little building blocks then you're ready the plot problem solving trap um, check that out when it comes to critical thinking that you get stuck in your old ways of thinking so again we always need to have that growth mindset instead of a fixed mindset that helps a lot time management managing your schedule your time your work-life balance information literacy again being competent and pulling out good information being able to cite it use quotations paraphrase properly and then also internalize that knowledge and then go farther by being able to apply that knowledge again that higher order thinking and then extrinsic versus intrinsic motivation um, again, internal drives versus external social forces that are driving you. Just some introduction to some stuff. And then again, make sure you guys are reading through the book. Um, thank you again, and y'all have a wonderful day.